Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. India rebukes Pakistan's Kashmir rhetoric at UNGA. Kashmiri activists highlight harsh realities of Pakistani terrorism in Valley. And UK PNP Secretary raises alarm over Pakistan's repression in POJK at UN Human Rights Council. Pakistan yet again misused the international platform at the United Nations to push its baseless and inflammatory rhetoric against India, showing its obsession with the Kashmir issue. In a desperate attempt to deflect from its own internal failures, Pakistan continues to raise Kashmir despite being called out for nurturing terrorism. India's sharp rebuttal at the UN laid bare Pakistan's hypocrisy, exposing its long history of sponsoring cross border terrorism. As Pakistan's economy crumbles and its own challenges mount, it continues to distract the world rather than addressing its crumbling state. We have a report. Once again, Pakistan utilized the international stage to promote unfounded and malicious allegations against India, a pattern consistent with its past behavior and persistent focus on India. Recently, during the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif raised the Kashmir issue once again, attempting to draw international attention. But India swiftly condemned these remarks, calling them hypocrisy at its worst. For such a country to speak about violence anywhere is hypocrisy at its worst. India's first secretary to the UN, Bhavika Manglanandan, delivered a powerful rebuttal, pointing out Pakistan's track record of cross border terrorism. Pakistan should realize that cross border terrorism against India will inevitably invite consequences. She highlighted Pakistan's involvement in violent acts that have repeatedly targeted India's sovereignty and security. Our stand is clear. Pakistan has long employed cross-border terrorism as a weapon against its neighbors. It has attacked our parliament, our financial capital Mumbai, marketplaces and pilgrimage routes. The list is long. For such a country to speak about violence anywhere is hypocrisy at its worst. It is even more extraordinary for a country with a history of rigged elections to talk about political choices, that too in a democracy. The real truth is that Pakistan covets our territory and in fact has continuously used terrorism to disrupt elections in Jammu and Kashmir, an inalienable and integral part of India. We know that Pakistan... Mangla Nandan emphasized that Pakistan has been the orchestrator of several major terror attacks on Indian soil, from the 1993 Bombay blasts to the 2019 Pulwama attack. India has been a consistent target of terror groups, nurtured and supported by forces in Islamabad. These attacks, which include the 2001 parliament attack, the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks and others, have not only caused hundreds of lives, but have also inflicted immense damage to India's infrastructure and security. Despite these provocations, India has continued to fortify its counter-terrorism efforts. India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar, in his address to the UNGA, reinforced India's stance on Pakistan's cross-border terrorism. He asserted that the only issue between the two nations is the return of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to India. 
a dysfunctional nation coveting the lands of others must be exposed and must be counted. We heard some bizarre assertions from it at this very forum yesterday. So let me make India's position perfectly clear. Pakistan's cross-border terrorism policy will never succeed. And it can have no expectation of impunity. On the contrary, actions will certainly have consequences. The issue to be resolved between us is now only the vacation of illegally occupied Indian territory by Pakistan. And of course, the abandonment of Pakistan's long-standing attachment to terrorism. Pakistan's repeated efforts to raise the Kashmir issue at the UN are widely seen as a strategy to deflect attention from its domestic crisis. The country is grappling with severe economic and political turmoil created by its own failed diplomacy. India's strong stance underscores the futility of Pakistan's attempts to internationalize the Kashmir issue. It is time for Pakistan to focus on solving its own internal problems and contribute to peace and stability in the region rather than spreading falsehoods at international forums. India's message to the world is clear that there can be no tolerance for terrorism and Pakistan's support for these actions will face the consequences. The Kashmir issue as far as India is concerned has only one solution, the return of Pakistan occupied Kashmir to its rightful place. Pakistani terrorism in Kashmir, driven by terrorist groups such as Jaish e Mohammed, Lashkar e Taiba, and Hezbollah Mujahideen, has resulted in significant suffering and violence. Recently, in candid discussions, Kashmiri activists Taslima Akhtar and Javed Beg emphasized the tragic loss of innocent lives and the extensive bloodshed caused by these organizations. In their discussions, they highlighted the stark contrast between the opportunities available to youth in Jammu and Kashmir and those coerced into joining terror groups in Pakistan-occupied areas. While young people in Jammu and Kashmir aspire for education and better future, many in these occupied territories find themselves pressured into terrorism, reflecting a troubling disparity. We have a report. Pakistani terrorism in Kashmir has long been a contentious issue. Over the years, various terrorist groups such as Jaish e Mohammed and Hezbollah Mujahideen have received support from Pakistan, resulting in widespread violence and the tragic loss of innocent lives. Despite international condemnation and repeated calls for peace, the persistence of Pakistani sponsored terrorism continues to challenge efforts towards peace in the region. Recently, Taslima Akhtar, chairperson of the Association of Terror Victims in Kashmir and a dedicated human rights activist, spoke exclusively with ANI about these critical issues affecting Kashmir. In her candid discussion, Taslima, who has just returned to India after exposing the harsh realities of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism at an event in Geneva, emphasized the profound impact this menace has had on Kashmir. कितनी इनोसेंटों की किलिंग उन्होंने की बेत लातेदाद लाशों को डेर कर दिया और जो उनकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस है लाइक जैश ए मोहम्मद हिजबुल्ला मुजाहिदीन लश्कर तैबा उन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनों की वजह से हमारा कश्मीर बर्बाद हुआ है हमारे कश्मीर लहूलहान हुआ है वर्ल्ड मस्ट नो कि कश्मीर में अगर एट्रॉसिटीज हुई है वो ओनली बाय पाकिस्तान टेररिज्म हुई है पाकिस्तानी टेररिस्ट्स आर नॉट ओनली टारगेटिंग कश्मीर बट आल्सो जम्मू दिस स्ट्रेटजी एम्स टू डीपन सेक्टेरियन डिवाइड्स एंड एग्जैसबेट कम्युनल टेंशंस कॉम्प्लिकेटिंग एफर्ट्स टुवर्ड्स पीस एंड रिकंसिलिएशन इन द रीजन बाय परपेटुएटिंग कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इन बोथ एरियाज 
these terrorist organizations seek to maintain their relevance and sustain their operations. This dual targeting not only disrupts the lives of ordinary citizens, but also undermines trust in local authorities, making it increasingly difficult to foster stability and harmony. Taslima emphasized that the people of India's union territory of Jammu and Kashmir have reached their breaking point in tolerating violence. We can't do so much. We have had to do so much. We हर प्लेटफॉर्म पर उनको एक्सपोज करते रहेंगे उनके ये फेक ड्रामे अब और नहीं चलेंगे वो कभी हमारी कश्मीर की घाटी को निशाना बनाते तो कभी जम्मू को वाइल एक्टिवली एंगेजिंग इन टेररिज्म एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेशंस पाकिस्तान कंडक्ट्स एक्सटेंसिव प्रोपेगेंडा टू प्रेजेंट इटसेल्फ एज अ डिफेंडर ऑफ कश्मीरी इंटरेस्ट्स रिसेंटली जावेद बेग अनदर एक्टिविस्ट फ्रॉम कश्मीर एक्सपोज दिस हिपोक्रेसी he highlighted the stark contrast between the opportunities available to the youth in Jammu and Kashmir and the fate of those in Pakistan occupied territories. Our uh, boys and girls in Jammu and Kashmir are going to international universities and their boys are, are taken to the uh, militancy training camps. This is the difference. You know, world must wake up to this. World must understand this, how people in POJK, POGB are mistreated. The stark realities highlighted by Taslim Akhtar and Javed Beg serve as a powerful reminder of the urgent need for global awareness and action regarding the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. As the cycle of violence continues and the plight of innocent lives persists, the international community must recognize the true nature of Pakistani terrorism and its impact on the region. As Pakistan continues its suppression of dissent and human rights in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, voices of resistance are growing stronger, calling for global intervention. The ongoing 57th session of the Human Rights Council brought attention to the grim situation in these regions, where activists are harassed, detained and silenced for speaking up. Here's a detailed report. Pakistan is facing criticism for its dire human rights track record. Decades of reports have detailed numerous violations in the Pakistan-occupied territories, including political repression, forced disappearances, torture, and restrictions on freedom of expression. International human rights organizations and advocacy groups have extensively documented these infringements in POJK and Gilgit Baltistan. Recently, during the Human Rights Council session, Sajid Hussain, Secretary of Information for the United Kashmir People's National Party, condemned the deteriorating human rights conditions in POJK and POGB. Hussain highlighted a range of severe violations, including the excessive use of force, arbitrary detentions, and the suppression of freedom of speech and expression. The situation has worsened, particularly in Ravla Court, where radical Islamic forces are gaining influence, issuing fatwas against activists and anyone challenging the oppressive regime. These religious decrees, often sanctioned by pro-government clerics, have become tools of persecution, leaving activists and human rights defenders vulnerable to threats, harassment and even physical violence. Honorable President, our organization urged the United Nations to prioritize the follow-up on the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights reports from 2018 and 19, which addressed grave human rights violations and forcibly divided the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly in Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. These reports brought light to critical issues such as excessive use of force, arbitrary detention, and severe restriction on freedom of expression and association. There is a deteriorating situation in Ravla Court, Pakistani and Kashmir, where Islamic radical forces are exerting pressure and issuing fatwas against activists involved in rights movements. One glaring example is the case of Asma Batul, a young human rights defender 
who was arrested and charged with blasphemy for sharing a poem on social media. Her actions attracted the wrath of extremist elements, endangering her life. Similarly, another activist, Arsalan from Arja Bagh, faced arbitrary detention for his outspoken criticism of the administration. Both were subjected to solitary confinement for over 10 days, and their families have been repeatedly harassed and intimidated by local authorities. Freedom of expression in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir is virtually non-existent, as the weaponization of religion serves as a tactic to silence any voice of dissent. Radical elements often operating with the implicit or explicit support of the Pakistani government have been allowed to target those who demand justice, labeling them as anti-Islamic and traitors. This calculated suppression not only curtails freedom, but creates an atmosphere of fear and terror. These decrees can result in various forms of harassment, physical violence, or even threat to life, particularly when directed as activists challenging the status quo. This development can lead to significant intimidation, fear, and suppression of voices advocating for human rights in the region. Recently, a brave human rights defender, Asma Vitol from Hajira Azad Kashmir, shared a poem on social media that drew the attention of extremist group. As a result, she was arrested by the government under blasphemy charges, putting her life in grave danger. Similarly, Asran from Arjabag was arrested and detained and their families are facing harassment and receiving life threats. Moreover, Pakistan has long been accused of using its occupied territories as breeding grounds for terrorism. Many terrorist outfits operate freely under the shelter of the Pakistani military and intelligence agencies. The people of POJK and Gilgit Baltistan have been denied political representation and are governed by puppet administrations, with decisions being dictated from Islamabad. This political subjugation is coupled with enforced demographic changes, where non-local settlers are brought in to alter the region's cultural and political landscape. Such deliberate manipulation is aimed at erasing the distinct identity of these regions and further consolidating Pakistan's illegal control. Pakistan's relentless efforts to destabilize India have once again been exposed as security forces in Jammu and Kashmir successfully neutralized a terrorist believed to be linked with the Pakistan-backed Jaish-e Mohammed. Despite Islamabad's continued support for terrorism, India's security forces remain steadfast, eliminating threats and protecting the region from cross-border infiltration. As terror networks fueled by Pakistan seek to disrupt peace, India's counter-terrorism operations have consistently dismantled these nefarious plots. Pakistan's persistent meddling in India's affairs only further highlights its role as a destabilizing force in the region. On September 28, a suspected terrorist believed to be linked with the Pakistan-based jaish e mohammed was neutralized in Jammu and Kashmir's Kathua district. Acting on intelligence reports, security forces launched an operation in the remote village of Mandli, resulting in an intense exchange of gunfire. The army confirmed the incident via a post on X, stating, one terrorist killed and war-like stores recovered, operation still in progress. According to the additional Director General of Police for the Jammu Zone, Anand Jain, the initial information suggested that three to four terrorists, possibly foreigners, were hiding in the forests around Khog village near Billawar. The operation is still underway as security forces comb the area to eliminate the remaining threats. और इसके बाद एक ऑपरेशन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस के साथ लॉन्च किया गया इस इलाके में जो ये विलेज कोग है ये थाना बिलावर क्षेत्र में आता है और हमने इसका कॉर्डन ले किया था और इसमें जो एक्सचेंज ऑफ फायर हुआ है उसमें हेड कांस्टेबल बशीर अहमद की शहादत हुई है और हमारे एक डीवाईएसपी और हमारे एएस नियाज को इंजरी हुई है जो कि स्टेबल है और अभी ये पूरे इलाके को कॉर्डन में लिया गया है और सर्च भी जारी है 
In a related incident, head constable Bashir Ahmed, who lost his life during a fierce gun battle, was laid to rest with full state honours near his residence in Jammu. Further clashes erupted in the Thanamandi area of Rajori district on September 29, when security forces initiated a cordon and search operation after receiving intelligence about the presence of two terrorists. These encounters have led to the intensification of search operations across Kathua and Rajori districts to track down terrorists. Pakistan's persistent endeavours to disrupt the peace in India is not a new phenomenon. A large number of terrorists with backing from Pakistan remain concealed within Jammu and Kashmir, persistently seeking opportunities to execute acts of terror and disrupt the peace within the region. Yet, despite the nefarious intentions harbored by Pakistan-based terrorists, counter-terrorism operations have exhibited remarkable success in quelling the menace within JNK. The problem with Pakistan is that it is now a failed state. It has nothing to show to the world except that it is an exporter of terrorism and that it is doing so by trying to send the terrorists into Kashmir Valley and tell the world or try to portray to the world that look, Jammu and Kashmir is not safe, it is disturbed and the people over there, they want independence. Whereas on ground reality what it is, is Pakistan itself is in a deep crisis. In response to the escalating threat, the Indian government has ramped up security across both the Kashmir Valley and the Jammu region. Additional forces have been deployed to key areas to prevent infiltration along the line of control and the international border, where terrorists frequently attempt to cross over with the assistance of local guides. Many of these infiltrators are equipped with sophisticated weapons including American-made M4 assault rifles fitted with infrared thermal sights, making them a formidable threat. In response, the Indian government has initiated several countermeasures, including enhanced border fencing and surveillance projects aimed at sealing off infiltration routes and securing the region. These ongoing operations and the robust security measures underscore the Indian government's unwavering commitment to safeguarding Jammu and Kashmir from external threats. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsaadnin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.